The Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit ruled this month that an affiliate of Lehman Brothers Holdings cannot claw back $1 billion in payments made when Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy in 2008. The court ruled that these payments were protected by the safe harbor provided by the bankruptcy code for the liquidation and distribution of proceeds from terminated swap agreements. This case is instructive since it dealt with the bankruptcy code protections against the so-called ipso facto contract clauses as well as the extent of the safe harbor for swap agreements. Ipso facto clauses are contract provisions that impact the party's property or contract rights based solely on that party's filing a bankruptcy case. Those provisions basically say that if you file a bankruptcy case, bad things are going to happen and you're going to lose rights. These clauses are generally unenforceable in bankruptcy, uh, which is a surprise to a lot of people, due to a number of bankruptcy code provisions. Obviously, such ipso facto provisions would favor certain creditors unfairly and discourage the use of the bankruptcy laws. Lehman Brothers structured its swaps by creating special trusts that sold notes to investors. These trusts that entered then entered into swap contracts with the Lehman affiliate. It's the Lehman affiliate that filed for bankruptcy and the Lehman affiliate that's bringing this action. The funds generated by the sale of the notes was the collateral that could be sold and paid to either the investors or to the Lehman affiliate upon certain triggering events, such as the default of one of the parties. The contracts entail the Lehman Brothers affiliate paying premiums for credit default insurance on certain corporate bonds, which is great timing since this was around before the crash of 2008. This was right before the 2008 crash, by the way, so obviously this was a good investment by, by this Lehman affiliate. A default event was, unfortunately, in fact, triggered by the bankruptcy, not of the affiliate, but of Lehman Brothers Holdings, the guarantor of the affiliate's obligations. One billion dollars was paid to these note investors by, by the trustees after the affiliate filed for bankruptcy. The Lehman affiliate filed a complaint alleging that the payment should be clawed back because the triggering event, the bankruptcy of Lehman, violated the ipso facto code protections and the payment was not protected by the safe harbor and the code for swap transactions. Lehman argued as follows. First, ipso facto protections do apply since the bankruptcy of Lehman triggered the termination of the swap contracts. The affiliate argued that even though the trigger was the bankruptcy of Lehman Brothers Holdings and not the Lehman affiliate, the ipso facto pr protections or prohibit prohibitions should void those provisions in the swap agreements since Lehman and its affiliates should be treated as one entity. Specifically, the affiliate argued that sections 365E1, sections 541C1, and 363L uh, apply. Uh, to, uh, to void the ipso facto clauses. Second, the affiliate argued that the safe harbor for swap transactions in section 560, section 362B17, and section 548G, I'm sorry, 546G, uh, should not apply. The trustee argued that the swap contract was entirely separate from the trust agreement. So though that safe harbor should not apply because of that. So it was, since it was the trust agreement that control the payments upon default, the swap safe harbor, which specifically applies only to swap agreements, cannot protect the trust agreement from being voided by the clawback or any other provisions of the bankruptcy code. The defendants argued as follows. First, ipso facto protections don't apply because the default was not triggered by the bankruptcy of the affiliate, but rather by the bankruptcy of Lehman Brothers the guarantor of the affiliate's obligations. Also, the provisions were not ipso facto provisions since they did not result in a modifi modification of the agreement prior to the bankruptcy of the affiliate. So the ipso facto provisions cannot apply. Second, the safe harbor provisions did apply and did pr protect the trust agreements which specifically incorporated the swap agreements. The priority provisions were contract rights under a swap agreement, and the distribution of the proceeds pursuant to those provisions were incorporated 
by the trust agreement as contractual rights of the note holders, as swap participants, and trustees as financial participants. Additionally, the application of the priority provisions was part of the contractual right to terminate or liquidate a swap agreement. According to the defendants, this is exactly what the safe harbor uh, was supposed to protect. The bankruptcy court's decision was as follows. The court rejected the one debtor concept and found that ipso facto provisions did not apply since the defaults were triggered by Lehman Brothers bankruptcy, not the bankruptcy of the affiliates. Also, any modification of rights happened prior to the affiliate's bankruptcy and were not triggered by the affiliate's bankruptcy. In other words, there's no protection against provisions that are triggered by another company's bankruptcy filing. It has to be your bankruptcy filing. Secondly, the bankruptcy court found that the, found that the swap safe harbor did protect the distributions because the language of the swaps indicated that distributing proceeds pursuant to the priority provisions was a fundamental element of the process of liquidation or termination of the swaps. As such, the enforcement of the priority provisions was the exercise of a right of the issuers as swap participants. For these reasons, the bankruptcy court granted the defendant's motion to dismiss the complaint. Of course, they appealed. The district court, uh, the trustee, I'm sorry, the trustee appealed. Obviously, they lost. They appealed. The district court's decision was as follows. The district court affirmed the bankruptcy court's decision, but didn't address the ipso facto controversy. The district court held that bearing in mind the primary purpose of the safe harbor provision is to protect the financial markets from uncertainty due to the risk of swap agreements not being honored in bankruptcy. The most sensible, literal reading of the provision applied to the distribution distributions in this case, in this situation with these swap agreements. Enforcing the priority provisions of the exercise of a contractual right to cause the liquidation or termination of the swap of each transaction is protected. Even though actual enforcement of the priority provisions fell on trustees as agents of the issuers, such, such enforcement was nonetheless, nonetheless a right of the issuers, who were swap participants under the, under the safe harbor. The opinion of the Court of Appeals does also did not address the ipso facto issue. It only focused on the policy of prohibiting the unwinding of swap agreements due to a bankruptcy. The Court of Appeals, like the District Court and the Bankruptcy Court, held that the priority provisions were incorporated by reference into the swap agreements, and thus, for the purpose of the safe harbor provisions, were considered to be part of a swap agreement. The contractual right to liquidate included distributions made pursuant to the priority provisions. The trustee exercised the contractual right to effect liquidation when they were distributed, when they distributed the proceeds of the sole collateral, and in doing so, they exercise the rights of a swap participant. So the Court of Appeals affirmed the District Court, which in turn had, had affirmed the Bankruptcy Court and the Bankruptcy Estate Loss. What I, what I find truly fascinating about this decision is that Lehman, whose exposure to the wrong end of credit default swap uh, caused the, one of the biggest, bank, in fact, the biggest bankruptcy in history so far, uh, and arguably almost a financial meltdown of the entire free world, was actually on the right side of the bet in this case. The irony, the irony is that even when Lehman bet on the winning side, it apparently lost money.